So Dad and I are here at the Wayne Toy Show in Wayne, New Jersey. We've had some pretty good success uh, going to this show in months past, especially the last time we went. So if you haven't seen that video, go back and check it out. We got a really a lot of nice comic books at great prices and some great vintage toys also. Uh, they have a couple price options here. I think kids under 12 years old get in for free. Um, if you show up after 10 p.m., I think it's $5 entry. And we're here early, so we're doing the early bird, uh, which I believe is 8 or $10 uh, entry. Something like that per person. Um, you never know what you're going to find here. There's always a good rotation of some vendors, but a lot of the guys, you know, it's a lot of the same. A lot of people you see, uh, we see here every single time we come. And just so you guys know, it is a once a month show. It's the first Sunday of every month the Wayne Toy Show uh, goes on. So it's pretty cool that they have the show so consistently. It's pretty close to home. It's only like 15, 20 minutes for us. And it's, it's always well worth the drive because even, I have to say, even the regular vendors, the guys that are here all the time, they, they always rotate new stuff. So, I mean, it's, it's really a great show. And uh, in this, this particular time, unlike last time, they actually have two rooms filled up, so I guess they added a couple vendors. So we're just going to check out this box here of minor keys and see if we can find anything. Thank God. Like I said, there's a lot of, a lot of good people in the medical. It's just that the, uh, at the micro, like the macro, it's, it's business. they got to make their money. they got to make, make their living. Money. I saw the bills that they submitted to medical. I had to pay it down. You know, Medicare. He was on dialysis three years. Eleven, twelve thousand dollars a month. Eleven or twelve thousand dollars a month. And like I said, he had six, seven, eight people just in his room. Right. Almost like a little family. Every three days, you see, you see your buddies going into, you know. Like I said, some of them are going in, they're going to work, but some of the older ones are going to lay in. So not really seeing any great titles in this box. Uh, everything's individually priced. Nothing really that's that's grabbing my attention. Be sure, guys, if you're not already, check out all the socials. Uh, I've been doing a lot, a lot, a lot of social media posting lately, and I'm going to continue to do that. Um, TikToks, Instagrams, Facebooks, if whatever whatever it is you're on, I'm going to try to get on too. And uh, yeah, so, so be sure to do that because it's going to be one of those things where I might post something on my TikTok or Instagram that you might not see here on YouTube and vice versa. There's going to be stuff on YouTube that you might not see on TikTok and Instagram or Facebook. So, uh, you know, if you if you subscribe to everything, which doesn't cost you anything other than a click, you know, it's, it's a pretty good deal for you guys. You get all the content you want for free. Now we're back here at the guy who we bought from previously. This is the guy, last time we went to the show, he had a lot of nice books. This guy is primarily a DVD video salesman. He has a lot of really nice and rare movies and DVDs and stuff. We, we bought some of those in the past as well. But recently he started bringing comic books. Uh, I'm not really too sure what his style is because, like I said, we've only bought comic books from him one time. This is the second time, and already as I'm going through this box... I'm not really seeing a lot of great stuff, and I'm seeing a lot of the same stuff from last time. It's the same thing with the wall books. It's not. It's he didn't bring like a new variety of wall books. It's a lot. Of, it's a lot of the same from last time. But I'm gonna go through it and see if I find anything cool. What's up, Bob? How are you? Hi. All right. I just wanted to share that. Sorry about the towel. Yeah, I know, really. Hey, how are you? How are you? Good. All right, good. I got this on. All right, no problem. All right, well, time to see. How's everything? I pushed myself. I told you I was worried. Because I, I, te I, I emailed you like... I, I emailed you like three, four times and I got no response. Now he must have been this must be through. Pennsylvania. We're all flooding. He <laughs> <laughs> must have gone to Pennsylvania. No problem. As long as you're okay. Yeah. How's your wife? Monster good? Bill, isn't it? Good. Monster Bill, yep. Yeah. That's his name. It took me two years, Bill. but I got it. Yeah. Yeah. He got it in Greece. No. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I had. I had a runny nose and I had a uh, cold. I had to eat, that's what I had. I had it in San Diego. Luckily, we couldn't leave Greece and Sabrina. 
And so as I'm flipping through these books, you know, like I said, I'm not really seeing a lot of stuff that I love. As I get into this last box here, I start pulling out more stuff, but my... But, you know, I, I start remembering back to the last time we were here, and I remember that this guy was very willing to work with us on the price, especially if we bundled and, and bought in bulk. So that's kind of uh, that's kind of the strategy for me at this point in time is because this guy is a, a seller. He really wants to sell these books. He wants to get rid of them. He'll, he's willing to negotiate off his sticker price. Uh, the more that we buy, the better price that we get. So as I'm going to go through these books, I'm just going to keep in mind, if I see something I like and I kind of like the price, I'm going to throw it in and I'm, I'm going to try to get it for a cheaper price. And I got a bunch of other new stuff and I just haven't had time to talk about it. Didn't you say we had comic books? Yeah, first of all, I have to see books in the boxes and I have the wall. But I have like all the new business and stuff in the air. And then I have some new money on the table too. That's about Jesus. This is the first Mr. Hyde. Uh, I don't believe it. <laughs> and uh, then I got a box of the other ones. I'm up to going crazy at the shows. I, I, you know, I have uh, bad ones. I have 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 Thank <laughs> you. 
That that stack there, that's not for sale. Uh, these are all for sale. They oh, they are. I just didn't have room to put them. Right. <laughs> you want to just go through this stack, Dad? Hey, you know what? Put them over here. You can look through them. All right. They're pretty inexpensive. It only fits so many in the box. You know? All right. Star Trek fan? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Star Trek's the best. But I, I, I only like the original series. I'm not a big fan of the there's, next uh, generation. There's a sci-fi group that I'm associated with. And uh, it's, it's, it's pretty much Star Trek. And it's like we have our own ship. Mm -hmm. And we give ourselves like titles. Like <laughs> and That's cool. And all this kind of stuff. And you know, we do like bad stuff and everything else like that. So That's so cool. Yeah. That's very good. Yeah, it's pretty good. Sounds like fun. I, if you have any interest, I, the card, that card over there, you can... Uh, use the camera on your phone. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it goes right to the Facebook page. You can check it out. Yeah. That's pretty cool. And it runs it as Mike Stein, and you can just mention my name. Hey, there he is. Oh, I'm sorry. Sick, isn't it? Feeling better now? Yeah. I was feeling better then, but I didn't want to go out I don't blame you. What's on that is is on the back. Yeah, it should be on the back. I know, but I just want to know the price. Oh, there's no price on it? No. It's eight. Oh, right. Yeah, remember, there's no price, it's eight dollars. And three for twenty. But it's got two discs. It's good stuff. I got some new stuff there. Not yet. No new potato rabbit. No, no. I see Brides of Blood. I have to say the rabbit on the table. Uh, you know what it is? He collects them and um, he's looking for specific. Like the ones you have are probably been released. We're looking for ones that, that have not been released yet. Yeah, that's an oldie. Yeah, oh boy. It's not even on the top part of the top part of the top that journey into mystery, you said, I think last time we were here, that's like a variant or yes. something? Yes, what, what it is, is it's it's the same book, Right. everything's the same, except that you notice there's no price, Right. because it was released in Canada. Okay, it's the Canadian so variant. So it's a Canadian variant, exactly. Okay. All right, well, actually, oh, it's not Canadian, it's British. Okay, okay, British. okay. All right, so, and it's in pretty good shape. And once again, you know, you just, like, sometimes you get a filler and then eventually when you find uh, a decent place for the next one. These are hard, these are really, these, these, their, pri their prices are going up like crazy. Right. So this is actually a pretty good placeholder until, you know, I could take my 20 off on this one if you wanted, go to like 50. So if you're a 50 at that and 40 on this. Yes. So that would be 90. Yeah. Could we do, could we do 120 for all of it? Just check the rest of that. What did we say this was? Four, you said 40 and then 50, so 90. Okay. So you want, the, you want these for 30, right? Yeah, if you could do, if you, I mean, let me know what you could do. Oh, 
How about 130? 10 more. How's that? I'll do that. Sound good? That sounds like a plan. Right. What's going on? Wow, look at Barry that. Nip from France. Can't find nothing on it. I think it's the only one that was ever made. That's that's crazy. That's crazy. I figured I'll ask two thousand for it because nothing on it. That's plus it's pretty tall when it's standing up. Yeah, that's not out of the realm of possibility. That's awesome. Yeah, Good luck with the whole box and everything. Oh wow, yeah. That's it's it's amazing. Good luck with that. Yeah, it'll take time. It, well, you gotta find the right buyer for it. Some more sets. So I thought this was funny, guys. I'm flipping through this guy's books, and I'm notorious, and people yell at me all the time, especially at the flea market, that I don't go through every single book, and, um... You know, you know, if if you don't flip through every book, yes, there is the possibility that you miss out on a great book and this, that, the other thing. And I heard it a thousand times. I understand that. I'm going through this guy's books, and I know I don't see stuff that I really like. Just the whole box is just nothing really that that I like. It's just not my my kind of comic. Um, but I do go through every single one of his box, every single one of his boxes, and all of his books, and I end up pulling out a book that I really, really, really been looking for for a long time. So I'm really excited that I, I did that. I had a feeling on this one. I'm not going to do it all the time, but I did it this time. Finally found one. I'll take that. <laughs> Got change? Yes, I do. It's ten. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's cool. Thank Josh, you. thank you. Hey, thank you very much. Let's get What is this? Oh. oh, that's the creature in the uh, garbage pit? Yeah. It's a nice stand. Wow. Vaser water. That's cool. Okay, Kirk and Spock on the picture. 125. 125, that's really awesome. Wow. How you doing, guys? How's it going? If you guys are interested in comics, I have more boxes back here if you want to look. I'll take a look. Do you have, where, can I come around? Oh, sure. I'm taking right here. To the right? No, coming around here would be not be feasible. There's no burning room <laughs> enough for me. But I'll show them to you right up here. Perfect. Let's start with this box. Let's take a look. So here's one of the regular sellers. This guy's set up everywhere and anywhere I go in New Jersey. We usually, if there's a toy show going on, this guy is there. He's set up. He brought a lot of comics this time. He usually has the wall behind him, but he, he brought extra boxes this time. He lets me go through it. He describes that these books are kind of, you know, he wants to sell them and, you know, they're priced to move and stuff like that, but they are not. They, these books are all, they're all priced right at, at about market value. There's not really a deal, deal to be found in this box, and I, I just, I, it's hard going through these books knowing I'm not going to really buy any of them. It's not a bad copy, it's about a mid-grade. It's really gotten off crazy. I was selling them for like 50 bucks up until, I don't know, six months ago. Yeah, right. And then I went through the roof. Some guy says, don't sell the rest of them. I see what happened. I, see. I have no idea. Thank you. 
That's number one. Uh, I got it for 125. That's in really nice shape. That your coffee stuff gives is a hundred. That's complete. I don't like my brother that much. <laughs> I also have Freddy the Flute from the cereal. That has the original box too from Battle Creek Mission. Back in the 60s. I have a four year old who loves your dollar found them on YouTube. Yeah, you know what it is? A lot of kids come up to me and I'm shocked. That's if they see it on, on TV now, they always rerun whatever. Does have a price? And they think it's real. Like I have the incredible Mr. Limpin up, which is an old Don Knotts movie. This little kid, he goes, look, Mr. Limpin. I said, wait a minute, how do you know this movie? He says, I just saw it like that. He said, what is the comic? I said, it's like a hundred bucks. A hundred bucks. I said, yeah, it's an old comic. So after not really finding anything at a great price there, we go over to this seller who has some really nice Marvel vintage. I, I love this. Like this is this is my my favorite stuff to look through is Silver Age raw books. Um, but it's the same story. It's it's books that they're you know he's pricing them right at market value. I have Dad next to me looking up prices as I'm pulling these out, and Dad's telling me exactly what the guy has the marked the sticker price on. So there's just it's you know the the opportunity to buy is really just not there for me. But I left one outside for this woman, so I was like, I have to grab the one right. from outside, but I don't want her showing up later and like robbing the place. Right. So you still have not heard from this woman? No. And, and like I said, I spoke to her yesterday afternoon. No problem. I'm there. I sent the pictures and stuff. Maybe she had an accident. And then, and then, you know, nothing. Maybe she's involved in some gunplay. A lot of people are involved in gunplay lately. Well, I can only hope. <laughs> Huh. It's like they're fucking shooting everybody everywhere. Yeah, it's like on Fourth of July. I'm going like you know, I po I put posts up like, hey, you know, how about being considered to dogs instead of making all that noise and scaring the crap out of all the animals on the street? Why don't you buy some dog food and give it to a shelter instead of buying fireworks? Oh, yeah, One guy goes. I made it. Anytime I get a commission, I make a couple extra. And As I'm going through this guy's stand, I'm kind of thrown back by some of the prices that he has here because everything's marked so reasonably. It's so unusual to be at a toy show and see reasonably priced toys, but I'm finding a bunch of stuff that's normally, you know, 10 to $20. I'm seeing them marked 5 to $10. Um, at this point in the show, however, after after spending $130 at the one guy's stand on the comics, I'm a little light on cash, so I got to make a conservative buy. But then I find the steal of the day. This is the coolest thing I've found in a long time. These are reasonably priced. Yeah. I could take these to the flea market and do ten bucks each on them. I like this too. And that's it. That's all I'm gonna do. I'm gonna like how and then for like new stuff, retail, and just anything he puts out of these. And then this is a little hole for that. I got two uh banners and this thing. Can you get that? Might buy a bunch of stuff actually. Crazy shit. I can't, you know. Like, 
and he's like, what are you after? Like, this is a lot. He's like, I did a, it cost me a dollar out of pocket. And then he ended up doing the trade. I did really well. I got a bunch of other trades. I mean, like, I mean, that was the way to do it. Like, you play your cards right, and you find stuff you want. Like, it's obtainable. Uh, Pete, where's Steve's uh, story? Where's Time War? Where is it? How's it going, man? Making a pile here. Hey, man. By all means. Just also curious, the Supermobile. That I just got. You just got it. That that's for you. That's for you. Okay. Yeah, my buddy just gave me that. That's my little haul for today. You know? Nice, I'm nice. Go um, you can ring me up on on this and this stack here, this they pile. Uh, so even uh, 50. 50? Yeah. Throw one of these in Frank. You know what? You're better off going to Zolo. You have a 10. Thanks. I appreciate you guys. Thank you so much. You too. Thank you. I'm curious what you have on the Modoc book. Oh, yeah, yeah. So this Modoc, um, I was just actually, I was just going to grade it. All right, guys, so I'm going to dig into this seller right here, this guy in particular. Not And listen, not in a derogatory way, not in a way to say that he did anything wrong or that I don't like him. Don't turn this into CGL as hate for this guy or anything like that because this guy is a really cool guy, really awesome, with really amazing books. But as he told me, you know, this is his first time ever selling at a show. And you know what? It really, it really, he really demonstrated that because he was not well prepared for, for questions. And a lot of his stuff, he was making up prices on the fly. And you could tell he was inexperienced in selling. Yeah. Yeah, that's me. <laughs> the what? Uh, I have a YouTube channel. Oh, cool. Yeah, cool, cool, I got a cool, YouTube. Cool. Yeah, man. Um, so I was just, uh, I was just, I was just going to grade it. Um, off the top of my head, I'd put it in like, like maybe like in the five range, you know. Yeah, that looks um, about right. All right, so let me just see. Just give me two seconds. Yeah, take your time. Uh, so you hear he's coming back, right? Oh yeah, I did this tattoo oh, wow. on him. Wow, that's really nice. Thank you, man. He's the best in New Jersey. Thank you, awesome. man. He's the best Thank all you so over. Much. He's coach. Appreciate it, man. That's my buddy, man. He's, he's just <laughs> looking out for me. Uh, yeah, dude, just give me one second. I'm sorry, man. I just, I got here kind of late, so I'm just... Uh, That's okay. Push. But if you want to flip through the here, yeah, let major, me see what else. there's major keys in, in both of these uh, bins. So I ask him what the price on the Modoc book is, and he explains that he doesn't have the book graded and he doesn't have the book price. So he goes on his phone. I guess he's checking eBay or he's checking some kind of website or maybe he has his own Word document on his phone to show him the price. I don't know. Um, but if he's using his phone to look up prices on comics, then that kind of makes it difficult for me to find any kind of deal. Um, the funny part is he was he was hesitant to give me a price on the Modoc book because uh, he said he hadn't priced it out yet, so he wasn't sure what it was at. The funny part is, as I'm flipping through these comics, none of these are priced, so I can't even tell you guys what the price on any of these books are because there is no price on them. A lot of the things that has have sticker price on, prices on them, he explains that those might have been prices that he bought them at the books at a while ago, and that's not the price that he wants to sell them at. Okay, that's fine, I guess. Uh, you know, I understand. That. I do the same thing. I have sticker prices on stuff that I'm like, no, that's not the actual price, but. It, if he's going to if he's going to look up every single book in this box and just give me the current market value of what the book is going for on based off of eBay sold prices or or an online website, then it's going to be really tough for me to uh, buy any books out of this out of this guy's stand. For the most part, yeah. Who's your character? Tough kid. My go-to is X-Men or Spider-Man. That, that's okay. that's really what I like. Okay. Yeah, I got a couple of Spider-Man keys. And I got a couple of X-Men keys. No, you have really nice X-Men books Thank in you, here. Man. I got just, X-Men number seven. Just throw the, me sec, a number. the second blob. Yeah. Uh, let me just go through, man. I made a little list. Um, of course, and uh, you know I'm super realistic, and I'm having a baby next month, so I'm open to. <laughs> I'm open to offers. Take a look. It's really, it's nice. Uh, it has an old, the old price on it is what I bought it for years ago, so please don't hold me to that. Um. So right there, you know, there's another example of 
dad's trying to get this guy to shoot him a number. He's like, real quick on this X Men Seven, you know, what can you shoot? Can you give me a number on this? And the guy's got to go to his phone. He's got to check his prices. Um, I'm assuming with some of these books, he might have he might have his own personal log where he has everything taken uh, into inventory and everything like that. He's got his prices already figured out. But from our perspective, you know, we can't buy any of these books. And and guys mis- mistake this and say that I'm, I think this guy's doing something wrong or something like that. I don't think that he's doing anything wrong, guys. I'm just saying that for me, for me, I can't buy these books. So good for this guy that he's got great books. He's asking the right prices, this, that, and the other thing. That's fine and great. I just can't buy from them. That's it. I got one more question. Yeah, sure, sure. <laughs> Dude, so that Just, book, I bought, is this your dad? Yeah. So when I was doing the same thing you're doing now, I bought that book with my dad. Really? Yeah. So really? That, yeah, so me and my dad used to go to all those conventions, and I bought that book with my dad, so. Wow. You know, so that book has a lot of stuff. So um, uh, like, uh, you want to, like, price it, or? I'm just curious, just to hear what, where you're at on it. Listen, I'm always curious, and I'm happy to answer everything. I don't right. give you guys anything. Um, you take PayPal? Yeah, because yeah, notice I have a tattoo shop. I, you know, like, so, so I'm on the grid with PayPal, so I just take such a beating. You know, yeah, right. So. All right. I'm sorry, so maybe man. we'll do cash. Yeah, cash is king. Um, that was, what, 41? This is 41, man. This is a nice copy. It, too, it is. Man. It's nice. Uh, for this book, I have not, you know, it's it's fully intact here. This book took a beating. Every other copy I've ever seen. Um, one second. Can I just say that you're a great salesman? Thank you. <laughs> oh, thank you, man. I appreciate that. Um, I appreciate you, man. And you got, yeah, you just got you great books. Like, I, I, I love it, but like, it's, this is not my business. This is the first time I've ever sold comics at a show. Oh, really? And it's, yeah, because I'm a collector, but because I love it so much and, you know, I have a passion for it. Like, I'm not like, uh, some people, it's like, they got to flip the books because right. that's how they make their right. living. Like, I have the tattoo shop is, is, is booming. Right, you're just doing this, on, this as just a fun like, hobby. That's I it, get, yeah. It's a hobby, and I got to get a couple extra bucks for the baby because I'm taking off next month. Um... Dude, so like, I would probably try to go like, uh, I would probably want to be like, like six fifty seven on this book, man. I know it seems a little bit. Uh, yeah, that's. Uh, I know, man. Um, that one's up there. I think but it's, it's a nice. little bit sentimental right, to me, absolutely. so it's like I'm probably. I picked the it, wrong like, one. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm probably pricing it in the thing where I'm kind of like uh, I, I keep it, you know. But um, you know. You know, listen, man, you know, I'm, I'm open to offers right. for sure, um, but, uh, you know, if you want to check it out. No, no, you, you can leave it in there. You can leave it in there. It's just, yeah, it's, it's a big kid. Hey, what's up, man? It's a big kid. Um, I was just pricing it. I was just pricing for these guys. Um, you want to check it out? Yeah, let's take a quick look at it. So that book and this book is this book is one of my favorite books, but they're especially hard because of the binding on them to get the like sure, sure. you know. Um, I'll price it out for you. No. I'll show you guys like so guys um and again like I'll show you some more stuff, but like uh, it just didn't get priced yet just because it has old prices on it from being in my collection. Right. Just so you guys know that I'm actually a collector. Right. Not just, uh, oh, no. yeah. So what were you looking for the surface of work? Yeah, but whatever you pull out, he's gonna just look it up. Yeah. So. Yeah, a lot of people don't like great books, man. It's great. What are you guys doing? What's going on? How's everything, man? Good. How are you? Good. How you been? Pretty good. Pretty good. Fun, you finding a lot out? of stuff. <laughs> cool. What you got? What is that? Red Rider BB gun from uh, Christmas Story. Oh my God. Yeah. Not bad. No, that's fucking cool. It's really cool. I, I've always wanted one since I was a Who's kid, and now I got it. Nice Who's got one? Who's selling those? Oh, uh, the guy. The guy right over there, he had one. I don't know if he has another one, but... I might want to get one for my kids. It's really cool. <laughs> you're going to shoot your eye out. 
What's going on? You got to stand here? Is this, this is you? The old right pop here. stuff? Yeah, the three of us are together, but this is my stuff. Oh, okay. That's Christian's and that's Post's. Nice, nice. Yeah. That's awesome. Awesome. All right, guys. So back after a trip to the Wayne Toy Show, we didn't buy a ton of stuff, but I feel like we bought some really nice stuff. So I was really happy with today's purchases. Um, I'll start off with one of my favorite things that I've bought in a while, and that's this uh, Peter Parker Spectacular Spider-Man number 22. And the reason why I'm... I'm so psyched about this book is that I've been looking for this book for a while. Um, every time I go to a comic book store or anytime I see a Peter Parker uh, Spectacular Spider-Man run, I'm always looking for number 22. I find found 23 a lot, uh, which is like a part two to this story, but I have not found 22 out in the wild yet. I mean, obviously, you know, you can go on eBay and search this book up and find it. Um, but for $10, like it, even on eBay, you know, you're not going to find this book really for that cheap. And it's in really nice condition. It is a newsstand copy. Um, I was really psyched to have found this book because, you know, I've been looking for it for a long time. So it's like the hunt's over on this one. So I was really, really excited to get that. Uh, next, a lot of these were dad's buys. You guys might not have saw these on camera because he bought a lot of these from somebody, uh, another person, another vendor. Uh, but he got a bunch of these books. These are all dollar books. A lot of G.I. Joe stuff. Uh, I got some Tarzan here as well. These were also a buck a piece. As you can see, they were not bagged and boarded. None of the, uh, except for that G.I. Joe book. But these books he pulled out of somebody's dollar bin. Here comes the G.I. Joe run here, 38. And they're really, I mean, these are in really nice condition. Uh, I know the G.I. Joe... Uh, comic book run is is more popular than I thought it was because I you know I, I'm really a toy guy at my heart so I know I understand the uh, importance and the uh, value behind the GI Joe toys but I I am recently here learning a lot about the uh, the backstory as to how these comic books were made and why they were made and kind of the perception that was surrounding them as they were coming out and a uh, very interesting story if anybody has any information on these books the history of these books feel free to share it in the comments section down below i'd love to read more about it keep in mind now all these books are a buck a piece this one's one of the earlier ones here 27. eighteen getting lower and we got one more number thirteen so that's a really nice run of gi joe's there for all for a dollar a piece so Good, good value buy there by dad. All right, now this was a combination of mine and dad's pulls. Um, if you guys have not seen the first time we, we uh, well, not the first time, but the last time we went to the Wayne Toy Show, we bought a bunch of comic books from this guy. Um, so he, he mostly sells DVDs and, uh, and movies, but he's been bringing comic books lately and we've been buying from him because he has some really good stuff and he's very negotiable on his prices, which is, which is great. So this whole stack, guys, um, what was it? I believe it was $130 for all of these books right there. Really nice, really nice condition. Uh, Superman number 200. Uh, this I picked up because I loved it. Like, this is really cool. Uh, Son of Dracula number one by Atlas Comics. Uh, but I don't, I don't know anything about this. So I'm kind of interested to do some research on this and find out, uh, you know, what happened to this storyline and, and what goes on there. But really cool book. Another one of Dad's pulls. Found that Star Trek 53. And these were uh, my Daredevil. So I ended up with, with the uh, the price I calculated. I, I ended up paying about $6 a piece on these Daredevils, which is pretty good. Uh, a lot of times you see these Daredevil books, these 12-cent Daredevils. And in my opinion, just, just so we're clear, my opinion, I'm not a huge Daredevil fan personally. But I do believe that the Daredevil comic books are a, a little undervalued at this point in time. Um, even 12-cent silver age books uh you could still find in like for like 10 bucks and under and that's what i ended up buying these for i ended up buying these for six bucks a piece when you when you uh piece out each book individually so i'm really stoked to, to have gotten these for that price this one here marked at ten dollars but we end up getting it for six dollars with the with the uh, lower price that i got it's journey to mystery 99 it's really rough condition uh detached cover with a tear here but for six bucks, guys, it's first appearance of Mr. Hyde in, in Marvel Comics. 
it's it's a really good book. for me six dollars like i don't care if the covers detached like it's a really really good book um i i didn't check to see if the book's complete or not i mean it looks complete it looks like it's thick enough but uh, even if it's missing pages I'm, I'm happy with that but i don't think it is so that's really cool and then we got these two books i understand uh that the, this uk variant <coughs> excuse me has um less value than the American version, but I really just love this book. I mean, this this is just a, a stellar looking cover. This is unbelievable. Like, this is really good stuff here. Uh, Journey into Mystery 109, featuring Magneto as the main villain. Uh, really cool. You could see he had it marked originally at $70. Um, but he, I, I'm trying to think what he, what he priced it down to. I think he said he would take 50 for it. And uh, yeah, really nice. I, and so this book, let's say this is let's say this is a seventy dollar book, and let's say it was the same exact condition, but it was the American version. It would probably be like about a hundred or a hundred and ten dollar book. So it does make about that much of a difference. It is pretty significant. But for fifty bucks, I thought that was a really good buy. And then I even paid his price. Uh, he had this one also marked at seventy, but he took it down to forty because of condition issues. And this is a really really awesome early Fantastic Four first X-Men crossover with the Fantastic Four. You can see here the book has been stapled together. Uh, you know, that's not the original staples. That's somebody's own home job. Uh, so the book's not in great condition. But for $40, I believe that there's uh, there's plenty of meat on the bone for that. And it's, it's a really awesome early Fantastic Four, Fantastic Four and X-Men. So, you know, best of both worlds on that. I really... For 130 bucks, I think this is a pretty good stack of comics. And um, while there's nothing super key in here, uh, there is some there is some good stuff. So I like that. All right, and then next, I'll have to back the camera up for this one. This was this was the steal of the show, in my opinion. Let's see if I can get this on camera. An 80th anniversary Red Rider BB gun. <laughs> straight out of a Christmas story um, super super cool the box has been ripped open you know the, the it's not new uh, per se, uh, you know it's not sealed but inside it's new it's still wrapped in plastics never been shot never been torn out of the original plastic super cool guy had it marked at 20 bucks it's like come on for $20 the, the only question is really with with this thing is how did nobody buy this before me it was it was right out in the open it was I believe it was on the floor uh right in front of the guy's stand marked at 20 bucks and like I don't care if you're if you're a collector of BB guns or not like this is just freaking cool <laughs> this is this is the the coolest one of the cooler toys that I've purchased ever um so that's that's super cool. I've always wanted to own one, and now I have it. So that's really cool. And from the same guy, ended up getting a bunch of really nice action figures at a really good price. That that's the only reason why I got these really is because the price was so good. Because I see these action figures all the time. I see these action figures all the time, guys. These are not rare. They're not uncommon. You can find them almost anywhere. But what is rare and uncommon is to find them at five bucks a piece. That, I never see that. I mean, these are, some guys have these marked, um, depending on which one, but sometimes as high as 20 bucks or 25 bucks for one. I know that there's some rarer ones, but I'm just talking just, just a regular plain action figure like this. You can find them 10 to $15 in most places. And that's where you'll be finding it at my booth uh, when I set up at the flea market. I'm gonna have these marked at 12 bucks a piece. Um, because I think that that's that's a, the fair market value on them, uh, but five bucks a piece was a great deal. So I got Black Panther, I got Iron Man, really cool. I'll take I'll take these stickers off so you guys can see them. Iron Man, super cool. Sticking with that Journey into Mystery one hundred and nine, we got Magneto. got these repop star wars figures super super cool I, my only regret actually is not buying more of them but i was running out of money um really cool from the mandalorian moth moth gideon uh even give him like kind of a black uh you know black blade uh what's it called the dark blade lightsaber um they just kind of do it like the little plastic piece that they used to do with the original figures that's cool and that was well, that was that was also five bucks i believe yes 
Uh, nice repop Lando Calrissian. It looks just like the original figure. Super cool. Uh, another Magneto, because why not? Like I said, like I said, guys, if I had if I had more money, you know, I was I was running light on cash. If I had more money, I would have bought a lot more figures, and I would have tried to get an even bigger bundle deal from the guy, because um, these are just great prices. And then I, I guess one of these is going to be a freebie, so I guess I'll make it this one because it was uh, I think it was fifty five for everything, and it ended up charging me fifty. Uh, so I got one of these for free, unpunched. Uh, from the Mandalorian Shadow Trooper. This one, you know, it's not as cool as the other ones in my opinion because it's it's like kind of loose in there. You see how, how it just kind of wobbles around as opposed to the other ones that have, you know, they got the, uh, they have like the plastic. Like th this is what the original figures used to look like. They had the plastic weapon uh, uh, to the side and the figure holds in place when you shake it. But this one, you know, he's, he's already holding the weapon and uh, he shakes a little bit in there, but it is what it is. <laughs> it's just the, the design of the toy, so I like that. Is there anything on the back here? Oh yeah, they got a bunch of figures, wow. Uh, I, I don't I don't stay up to date on all these new things. Oh, they have, a, they have a Luke Skywalker, I didn't see that. But super, super cool, and like I said, at a great price, you know, I'm, I'm gonna mark these at about a little bit more than double what I paid for them, because, uh, you know, not, not because I'm trying to rob anybody, but because that's what they're worth. Uh, so that guy had them at five bucks a piece. I hope I run into that guy again next time I go to the Wayne Toy Show, because I'm gonna be bringing a lot more cash with me. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it, guys. So, I mean, super cool stuff. I mean, my my favorite thing, even though it is even though it is the, um, the UK version, I really like this uh, Journey into Mystery. That's super cool. And then same here, even though the, the cover's detached and even though it's like kind of ripped up, I like th this other Journey to Mystery 99. Um, I'm a big Universal Monster fan, so Jekyll and uh, Hyde, you know, that's a, a big thing for me, so I really like that. And I love Thor and Jack Kirby artwork, and these are all these things all together right here. And um, the Red Rider BB gun also, I'm not gonna get that back in the camera, but it's a little too big. But tell me guys, uh, you know, Especially in this in this episode, there were a lot of uh, we, we looked at that one guy stand. He had a lot of really really nice books. I mean, just really nice stuff. And and just outside of my price range on a lot of them. Uh, unfortunately, I felt bad because the guy said that he was, you know, the guy said he was trying to sell to uh, he was having a kid, so he was trying to sell to kind of you know pay for the uh, some baby expenses. But his prices weren't really at at a, at a I'm trying to sell kind of price. That's why, you know, that's why I'm not a buyer on stuff like that. He was looking up kind of the prices on eBay and then just gauging it based off that. He was taking probably like a couple bucks off. And then some stuff like the, you know, the uh, the Spider-Man first appearance Rhino, Spider-Man 41, he went above and beyond on that because it had some sentimental value to him. So I, I'm just not uh, a thousand percent convinced that he was motivated to sell. You know, I, he said that was his first time selling at a, at a convention. I believe him because he, he didn't look like he was a thousand percent prepared. Um, but, you know, I, I understand a lot of people are going to say, why didn't you buy this? Why didn't you buy that? You know, I couldn't buy it at, at those prices, and it has nothing to do with the money in my pocket, believe me, because if we really, really wanted to get something, we would make it work. You know, we would hit an ATM, we'd go to a, low, uh, a nearby bank, uh, dad's got, you know, dad's got all kinds of online payments on his phone. Uh, if we really saw something we really liked, we would have made it work, but we looked at the X-Men 7, the second appearance of Blob. You know, he had that, I think he wanted 350 for it, and it was in about a 3.5 or 4 condition. And you could find cheaper ones on eBay for this in the same condition. So, you know, that didn't really wouldn't really make sense for us to to buy it in person, but pay more for it than we would pay for it online. So, you know, I'm not sure that 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 he was a hundred percent motivated to sell. And you know, if it was his first show, is is his experience lack of experience was definitely showing. But it was nice just to see a lot of those books and hold them for the first time. Uh, and that was really cool, especially the uh, the Rhino book. I think Dad has one of those in his collection, but it wasn't that. It's not in that nice condition compared to that one. That was really nice. Um, so that's it. Like I said, next time we go, we're gonna bring more ammunition. Um, Wayne Toy Show. It's the first Sunday of every month, so I have waiting for the first uh, Sunday of September to come around, and we'll be back at, at that. Uh, this video is getting out a little bit late, but like I said, it's be in, in previous videos, it's because I have so much content to put out, so I really appreciate you guys sticking with me. Please go follow the socials on um, uh, TikTok, 
Facebook and Instagram. Um, been doing a lot of posting there. I'm going to continue to do a lot of posting there. Uh, so, and sometimes I'm going to be posting stuff on those platforms, especially Instagram and TikTok. Those are the two big ones that I'm going to be posting on uh, that you guys might not see here on YouTube. So, you know, it's going to be one of those things. Yeah, it's going to be one of those things where it's like you got to follow everything. <laughs> uh, I hate to do that to you guys, but it is what it is. You know, it's, uh, some of those platforms are just a little bit easier to post stuff on. So, like pictures and stuff. So, be sure to subscribe to all that, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.